Yo, a new video released by Raid shows them telling us how to actually defeat this Amuse the Lunar Archon. I want to take a look at that video with you guys and see if they are right about it. Now, it's been out for a while and the community as a whole has been com coming up with different teams to beat this um, boss. But it seems like so far it's only end game players who have the right gear, the right stats, high level of Ascension champions and... Um, what is his name? Python that can beat this boss. And yeah, let's see what Raid has to say about him. Let's see if they are right or if they know the game or not. I know when they released this boss, they knew there was a way to beat it. They always look, put a way to beat it and they leave it off for us to figure it out. So now that we've figured it out, kind of, are they saying there are other ways to do it besides just using Python and this team that everybody is usually doing? Um, that is poison, 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 or even the big crazy nooks that I see some people doing with double, triple ally attack. Let's see if something this video can help newer players defeat this boss. Let's watch it together. Hopefully, they don't get it wrong. Hello again, Raiders. Welcome back to the second update preview video dedicated to the Cursed City feature. If you've watched the first one, you'll know all about this huge new feature we've got okay now i remember when they released this entire cost city they did not really focus on the boss they talked about the rewards they talked about the stages the double bosses they talked about the gear everything the rewards will be getting along the way the uh, missions and everything the, that first video focused a lot on the general map and how to different parts you can go to finally get to this boss the three keys the um, eclipse the new buff that brushed a lot on different content so i don't think they had a lot enough chance in that first update preview guide to talk about only this dude so i think that's the video we've all been waiting for but it should have dropped before we went there to struggle with the boss so i guess it's still okay for them to drop it now so maybe this is maybe might be them just telling us about how they intended to us to be the boss hopefully it shows us some champions not just general um explanations about how the boss skills work because right now i think we all have a good idea about how it works if you faced um, him by now if you've not what are you waiting for go watch it link is in the description below this time around we'll be talking strategy giving you the knowledge and tools you'll need to storm the eclipse tower and defeat amy as the lunar archon First things first, this is a straight showdown between your team and Amius. No waves of enemies, no pesky minions to deal with. Just you and Amius at the top of the Eclipse Tower. Okay, right off the bat, from this sample team they are just showing, I'm seeing increased accuracy. I'm seeing a lot of buff, a lot of buffers, and then of course the debuff, debuff, debuff. They didn't bring the big decrease attack. There's no decrease defense in here. Well, that's Lydia. So it's like a mixture of everything and of course it seems like this main champion is always going to be there at the beginning right here to do your cleansing. So just one cleanser, I don't think that's going to be enough <laughs> but because everybody these days is bringing in two cleansers to help them and of course decrease attack will also help you stay alive. But these are squishy champions, just one reviver, she might be tanky enough but this, is also, this also works because Python mitigates a little bit damage from the passive i guess that's why a lot of people want to use him instead of uko because i also have a uko but i did not intend to use her for that content instead i went for a sealed drake as my second reviver because she had that passive healing coming in here's the bad news that won't make this fight any easier amy is the lunar archon is the first boss in raid to have two forms just like mythical champions each one has its own strengths and weaknesses and his transformation is tied to a new unique buff that he can place on himself. More Eclipse. On later. Defeating the boss means fighting in both of his forms. So let's dive into both his skill sets and everything Amius is going to throw at you. Amius will always start the fight in his base form, which is focused mm -hmm. on healing over damage. His first skill, Waxing Potence, may sound simple, but it can be pretty effective. Amius will attack everyone on your team once, but he'll increase the damage inflicted by 10% for each buff he's currently under. He'll also heal himself by 100% of the damage he deals with this skill, including damage done against shields, and any excessive damage if this attack breaks a shield. Pretty crazy, right? If you thought that was bad, it gets worse with Amius' second skill, Lunar Storm. He'll attack everyone on your team once, but there's more going on here. Before he lashes out, Amius will increase the duration of his buffs by one turn and heal himself by 20% plus an extra 5% for each buff that has its duration increased. But wait, it gets even better for Amius. 
He'll also decrease the duration of all debuffs on himself by one turn, and fill his own turn meter by 10% for each debuff that had its duration decreased. And that's just his second skill. I'm waiting for them to tell me something I don't already know about this boss. So far, all I'm hearing so far is things I we already know this by now about him. I'm looking for the extra secret that I did not figure it out yet. Let's see if they'll add any little nugget in here to help us know more about this skill. Because if you read the skills, you think that's all it, that is about that skill. No, there is more hidden. Not everything they could write in the skill itself. So some other things were not added. Amius is third like turn meter. Rampant chaos is a real game changer. Hold on to your hats, folks. Amius will remove all debuffs from himself and replace them with their mirrored buff equivalent for three turns. Yeah. Yep. It's as bad as it sounds. Let's say you've put out a 50% decrease attack and a 25% weakened debuff on Amius. When he uses this skill, they'll get removed and replaced with a 50% increase attack buff and a 25% strengthen buff. You can see the full list of debuffs and their mirrored equivalents on the screen now to see just how powerful this skill is. Now, I know what you're thinking. It can't get worse than that. Oh, yes. Yes, it really oh. can. After replacing all of his debuffs for buffs, Amius will then place a stun debuff on any non-mythical champions on your team. Mythical champions won't get away unscathed, though. Amius will force them to change forms. Finally, oh yeah, there's more. Amius will also increase his turn meter by 10% for each debuff that's converted into a buff. No time to rest, though. Amius' fourth skill is Robed in Moonlight. This passive increases the effectiveness of Amius' self-healing. So we've already learned from that skill not to place debuffs on him at the wrong time. So we are okay with poison, 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 or even hex. That's why nobody comes in there with um, decreased defense and other um, debuffs to place on him. So poisons is what most people just look at. Maybe HP bone. <laughs> Every time he deals damage to an enemy that has his shield buff on them, Amius will heal by 100% of the damage done. If he manages to break through the shield, the heal will be equal to the full value of the shield, but it won't count any excessive damage on top. Amius isn't content to stop there. He'll also heal himself by 25% of any heals that your team put out. We're That's why heal reduction is out there. Heal reduction, not just for when he takes his own heal, but for him, when you heal your team, he will also be getting a little bit of heals. So heal reduction is the solution to all these healing jargons they are saying right now. Heal reduction stops it. If you can get a champion that have heal reduction that cannot be um, removed, that's even better. Because right now, Cold Heart is just there placing heal reduction. When he converts it to continuous heal from himself, she just places another heal reduction. A1 heal reduction is Cold Heart's best way to the point that I had to rebuild my Cold Heart that is built in Savage. I had to build that tanky for this content and she is the best champion for that heal reduction. She's not there for crit rate, crit damage, zero crit damage. Well, you can't achieve zero crit damage, but you know what I mean. Just make her survive and she solves all this problem. Like, imagine a rare champion being useful in a content like this. It's quite amazing. So despite how all this healing is going on, Cold Heart is the solution. Or Venom Mage, if, you're, if you can make her work in your teams. Talking skill-based heals, continuous heal buffs, and artifact sets like Life Steal and Bloodthirst. The only two methods of healing that won't affect this passive skill are equalizing HP and swapping HP with the target. Amius is immune to both of these, but they will still affect your team. The last part of this passive lets Amius decrease the cooldown of his next passive skill whenever one of your champions also decreases a cooldown. There aren't any rules here either. You could decrease a cooldown with an artifact set, skill, or a mastery. Let's find out exactly why this is really bad news. It is bad. I found out the hard way. I was playing. My Python had that mastery that has a small 5% chance of decreasing the cooldown of one of his skills, right? That mastery messed me up right at the end. If you guys saw the video when I was taking down Amius after fighting two times, the last time battle almost over, his health was already right here. And that 5% finally proc. After the entire battle, he did not proc once. He just takes that 5% to proc once and Amius will just go crazy and it almost makes him take an instant turn. It's not like the cooldown of three, four champions were reduced. No, only the cooldown of one champion was reduced and he just went crazy and started doing crazy things for me. I didn't understand. I was like, it's not his turn, but yes, it is his turn. And that's what happens when you decrease cooldown, either from passive 
from active skills that's why you will not see yumeko and um what's his name now all those other champions who decrease cooldown of the allies here don't do it with masteries don't do it with artifacts don't do it with champions and you'll be good hopefully news for your team with the second passive skill archon's ascendance amius will place an eclipse buff on himself for three turns it's fully protected, meaning you can't steal or remove it or decrease its duration. Nope, it's here to stay. Yep. When Amius is under an Eclipse buff, he'll transform into his alternate form. If his base form was all about healing and sustainability, Amius's alternate form is all damage. about the damage. What's really important to remember here is that when Amius is under an Eclipse buff and in his alternate form, killing him won't end the fight. Instead, Amius will revive himself in his base form with 30% HP and 50% turn meter. That's why most people want Lydia in their teams. That's the only reason why I see most people want Lydia because it just makes the fight unnecessarily longer if you have to predict when to kill him. So in my case, when I tried him once, I just fought him once. In that case, he transformed to the base form and that's when my poisons killed him. So sometimes... <laughs> You have to time it the right time and then or bring a Lydia along if your other team slots are not yet filled up. And yeah, but careful with our buffs and debuffs though. Maybe Lydia is just there using an A1. I saw somebody use Lydia, but all the while she, in the team, she was just using A1, A1. Or when the boss needs a bunch of buffs to steal, when he's about to transform, she places a bunch of buffs on your allies and then he steals them or he removes them, not steal. We'll get into the alternate form skills in just a moment. But first, some good news. This passive will start on a four turn cooldown at the start yeah. of the fight with Amius. So you've got some time to prepare. For now though, let's jump into what the alternate form is going to throw at you. Amius' first skill in his alternate form is Abyssal Construct. He'll attack one target two times and he'll increase the damage by 20% for each debuff on the target. Ouch. Amius will also ignore 100% of the target's defense. Yep. And he'll activate his third skill if this attack kills its target. Double yep. ouch. And yeah, we'll talk about that third skill later. But don't despair just yet. That ignore defense effect can be mitigated if the target champion is awakened. The level of mitigation depends on the level of awakening. That's why Cold Heart is perfect here because almost everybody who has been fighting that Iron Twins Fortress since it came out with their six keys per day or summoning from the Altar of Souls, you should have your six star cold heart awakened by now i'm just saying if you've been farming the iron twin since it came out and you've been using in the altar of souls or she has been on your wish list why should you not have a six star awakened cold heart by now because when he hits cold heart imagine a cold heart surviving a skill that ignores 100 percent defense it's not possible so that's why with being six star awakened she the ignore defense effect is less way less and she can survive with her stats so that's why I'm using her in that content. If you have any other champion, like your Venomage is 6-star Awakened, well, or even 5-star Awakened will also work, I guess, in this content. So that's the decreasing the ignore defense effect. No other champion can survive it. Not even block damage. Nothing can make you survive that hit except you are fully awakened or highly awakened. Cold Heart, Veno, or any other squishier champions you, who you want to be the target. I think he targets the champion with the lowest HP. So other has to be higher. So again, they're telling me something I already figured out from other videos that have already been shown from other content creators about this boss. And you can see the numbers on screen now. Moving on, Amius' second skill is Blood Moon Vortex. First up, he'll increase the duration of every debuff on your team by one turn. As if that wasn't bad enough, he'll then decrease each champion's turn meter by 10% for each debuff that has its duration increased. Let me offer you a glimmer of hope here though. That turn meter decrease can be mitigated in the same way that the damage from Abyssal Construct can, with Awakened Champions. We'll put the numbers on screen now. Amius isn't done. We'll then decrease the duration of all your buffs and smack your entire team for good measure. What's worse is that for every buff affected, the damage will increase by 5% of each target's max HP, up to a maximum of 50%. Uh so minimum this says five buffs is okay so if you have two 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 buffs i think that would be enough for him to use that skill if you do not have enough buffs he will not use that skill that's what i've noticed so far oh, yeah amius hits hard amius's third skill is maniacal bedlam and this works pretty similar to his third skill from his base form remember how it replaced his debuffs with their mirrored buff equivalent 
Well, this time, Amius is removing your buffs and replacing them with their mirror debuff equivalent. He'll also place a sleep debuff on all non-mythical champions and force mythical champions to change form again. That sleep debuff, by the way, can't be resisted. For every buff that's converted into a debuff this way, Amius also gains 10% turn meter to help him smack your team again. So that allows him to wake you up. So you want him to have enough buffs to remove and then you go to sleep and he wakes you up. So yeah, just don't bring, just don't add decrease defense. Well, if you had increased defense, he would change it to decrease defense. I learned that also the hard way because I was using um, somebody else who does decrease. What's her name now? This champion that is doing a cleanse. Can't remember her name. So she placed decrease defense by placing hex on him, and that's what made me die. So don't add decrease defense. I mean, don't add increase defense as one of the buffs you need. Somebody else who placed some other buff that he cannot convert to anything, like this champion right here, wood painted, <laughs> wood painted. I think that's one champion that adds just one buff though. It's not like it's a lot of buff. She adds this buff that cannot be converted, reflect damage. So there are some buff you can put on your allies which he doesn't convert to a negative effect but so let's say decrease attack him converting increase attack to decrease attack that's not that bad especially if you're dealing with champions who deal damage based on poison so you don't really care about him converting your increase attack to decrease attack let's keep watching Remember that first skill, Abyssal Construct? If Amius kills an enemy with that skill, then he'll immediately activate this one. So bring plenty of protection. We're nearly there, folks. Amius' passive skill in his alternate form is Scarlet Eclipse. And it really makes the most of that Eclipse buff he's got. First, Amius will have the value of any heals that your champions receive. That alone would be bad, but it'll also ignore shield, block damage, and unkillable buffs when he attacks. He's bringing the pain. Yep. Oh, and did I mention that if any of your champions decrease the skill's cooldown in any way, Amius will lash out at a random enemy with Abyssal Construct? Okay, we... That's what happened to me. He will lash out for no reason. We've had a ton of bad news, so let's have some good news, right? Thanks to the Awakened Weakness passive skill, Amius will deal less damage to Awakened Champions and receive more damage from Awakened Champions according to how many Awakened levels they have. We'll put Cold hearts. up on the screen for how much that'll impact your fight. Awakened Champions are going to be super helpful in this fight, but you can't rely on them alone. Let's I can. Into some other strategies to help you conquer this moon-obsessed menace. So, let's start with tactics to take on Amius in his base form. Finally. A strong focus on healing and countering debuffs. You'll either need to put out loads of damage quickly or time your heal reduction debuffs to ensure he won't just replace them with continuous heal buffs. Be careful though, just because he's in his base form doesn't mean his attacks won't seriously damage your team. Nah, the, the base form is not that hit it's not that hard hitting. It's not really. <laughs> really. It's not. We like the base form. You just have to be careful about the number of debuffs you put on him because he will just convert it. That's all you need to be worried about at that base form. And then by the time about he's about to switch, you just look at the counter right here. When he's about to switch, he just place the buffs on you. No, this is too early to be placing the buffs, I think. Too many buffs right now. What will you do when it's now on one turn? Team without proper protection. Remember, his third skill in both forms can either stun or sleep your champions and force any mythical champions to change form. That, that stun can be blocked by um block debuff buff so that's why python is also good there before he does it he can place that block debuff buff and block that stun from hitting you or from landing or you can take the stun and then cleanse it with mitral life bane that's the champion i was thinking about she's perfect for that cleansing even if she can block the stun if you don't have a python she can cleanse it along with any other person doom priest can even be taking numerous stuns and doing a lot of cleanse to make sure you don't have a lot of debuff on you that stun debuff from the base form's third skill can be resisted or blocked so be sure to bring champions with high resistance or a champion who can place block debuffs block. Yeah. Uh, buffs anyway when amius gets his eclipse buff and transforms into his alternate form that's when he really kicks off ignoring shield block damage and unkillable buffs means he's ready to tear through your team like tissue paper the key thing here is mitigating Amius' damage, and there's two ways to do that, debuffs and awakened champions. Since Maniacal Bedlam is focused on removing your buffs and replacing them with debuffs, Amius is susceptible to decrease attack. 
The other very important thing to remember is that Amius will revive himself when he's killed in his alternate form. Champions with block revive debuffs like Rhodos or Foley are the perfect foil to Amius' alternate form. If you place that decrease attack on the wrong time and it converts it to increase attack, I'm sorry. That's why in my team, using Cold Heart, instead of Venomage, I did not place decrease attack at all. So those who are using attack will have to deal with that possibility except you time it rightly and know when it's about to take a turn so you don't have decrease attack so it doesn't convert your decrease attack to increase attack because that would be so so bad i don't think you can survive that hit just keep restrictions in mind you might not be able to bring the same champion along in the next rotation last that's it so all the champions we just used in this content right now this team it's only for this particular rotation of this Luna Archon battle. The next time he comes around, it will be an entirely different set of champions we have to use to face up with him. So it's essential that you know how his abilities work. You just don't think about the champions. You have to think about other champions who can always switch and come in right here. Let's say Kodat is not available for us to use next time. Let's say Venomage is not available for us to use next month because this entire roster will change. We'll still have to look for heat reduction decrease attack a bunch of buffs a bunch of cleansers a reviver build tanky teams high ascensions champions already so that's what we'll still have to think about the buffs requirement and the debuff requirement and then you still maybe still poison or hp bond to deal with him and then yeah hopefully by then we'll still have some key champions if python is not there maybe then next time to be a duchess we just need that passive ability to not take a lot of damage and yeah, I see a lot of people also using Krisk, but I didn't want that decrease attack, decrease defense to be on the boss and he converts it all the time. All right, so let's see. Hopefully, the next rotation is not that brutal. But if you have the right idea about this first rotation, I don't think the next one will be that uh, difficult to deal with. Hopefully, that's me just being hopeful. Remember that debuffs such as Poison and HP Burn don't have a mirrored buff equivalent. If yep. you can keep them on Amius, they'll help to balance out the healing he receives across both of Amius's forms. So, some people have said even a champion, you place that um, poison, right? Then a champion increases the duration of those poisons. You place HP Bone and you keep activating the HP Bone. I've seen some people talking about um, um, Chronam, right? Chronam also does that, increase duration of the, um, HP Bone and even activating HP Bone. So, that's also a strategy. Ninja, maybe. So there are different ways to deal with him. Poison might not be the only way. If the next rotation doesn't give us a good poison champion to add to this list, we might not just we might just deal with um, HP Bone, another way of dealing with him. Because max HP nukes and all that, you don't have enough stats to build sustain and damage. So that's why we're dealing with HP Bone and Poison as the main way of taking him down. Timing is everything. Play your debuffs too early, and Amius will just replace them with buffs to make himself stronger. Play them too late, and your team may not be around to take full advantage. Build a team with incredibly high damage and block revive debuffs, or prepare for a war of attrition. And that's everything we've that's got for okay. you this time around. <sighs> what a monster of a boss, right? Well, that's Amus. I don't think they said anything new. Like I said, this video was supposed to launch before we found a way of beating him. But I think they focused a lot more on the entire map than to deal with him. They didn't expect the community to just beat him down so fast. Well, that's me speaking from an Indian player who have been playing over three years. For those players who are coming in, like my Noob to Pro account, it's not even near that stage already. We are already beating that first um, stage and then the second stage. We can't even beat Boomal on that account. So newer players are, done, are not looking forward to beating these bosses. Endgame players who are having difficulty building the right champions who should, you know, find this video maybe useful and maybe give us an idea of what teams to come up with the next time the rotation comes around. So hopefully we'll have a better idea of this boss by now and as a community we can always beat him down whenever the rotation changes and no matter what challenges they bring to us in terms of the champion selections and the restrictions we have to obey when building different champions to beat this boss. Hopefully we get to see amazing epics, not just legendaries, legendaries, legendaries. Hopefully we begin to see those epics. We have six star ascensions on and never used. Maybe they begin to shine in content like this if they have the right debuff, buffs and survivor stats to make this boss, um, to take this boss down. Did you find this video useful? 
hosted by Plarium. Check out their video. I'll put the link in the description below if you want to watch the full video and maybe watch have a better understanding about it. I already released my video about how to beat him. It will always change next rotation. But for now, we will see what the community has to say about it. Whether we'll figure out more better ways to deal with it or we are stuck in our ways with Python, Venomage, Coldheart and Lydia and others who are currently doing it right now. Let's see what happens when the rotation changes. I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Later, guys.